I've been through all the data from all the house price indices so you don't have to. You're welcome. And I can tell you the answer to the question is no. Property prices do not double every 10 years. So if you want to leave the video because you have the answer, please drop me one of those because it helps the channel a lot and you'll feel better for it. However, if you'd like to know how long it has taken the average house price to double, and more importantly, why you shouldn't rely on capital growth alone when investing in property, then still drop me one of those and watch the video to the end. Hi, I'm Andy from Monopoly.com and on this channel I share my experience as a property investor and landlord and also interview other investors so we can learn from their advice too. So if you're new here, consider subscribing for more videos like this. Have you ever heard someone say that property prices double every 10 years? I have and it grabbed my attention. I think it's a statement that people throw about as a way for them to express that they believe the property market can be a good investment. Of course, different areas will have rises and falls at different times. So the question we need to ask is, what has been the average for property prices doubling? Having gone through all the data, I can tell you that the history of property prices is very interesting and very appealing. So I think it's worth me taking the time to share this with you. By the way, I'm not a statistician and I found this exercise to be really hard work and mind numbing. When I look to buy a property, I enjoy looking at the sales history and other details, but to look at at spreadsheets with just dates and figures is just mind-numbing for me. Anyway, I'll share with you some charts and statistics, and if you're still awake, I'll share some details of a property that I've owned in the past so we can look at how that's performed over the years. You can also find the resources that I use to do my research on my website, and I'll place a link to that in the description below. So why do property values increase? Well, inflation is one of the main reasons. The increase in prices for goods and services is going to have a direct impact on the property market. If it's gonna cost more to buy the materials and hire the services to build a property, then it's gonna cost more to buy that property. A few other factors that cause property prices to increase are people living longer, an increase in population, an increase of employment within the local area, a decrease of the number of properties for sale, supply and demand, improved transport links, and a buoyant lending market. There are a number of data sources that I used to conduct my research. And here's a summary of the most popular house price indices. There's the Office of National Statistics, which surveys between 75 and 80% of the mortgage market, the Nationwide, which keeps records of their own lending, and the Halifax, who keep records of their own lending. So the house price indices for those top three exclude cash sales. You've then got HM Land Registry that record repeat sales data, but they exclude properties that have not sold at least twice since 1995. The other thing to identify is that the top three cover the whole UK, but HM Land Registry only cover England and Wales. There's a few key points I'd like to highlight when it comes to reviewing the data from any house price index. Firstly, there isn't any house price index that captures all data of sales from mortgages and cash for the whole of the UK. Secondly, of all the indices that use mortgage data, the ONS is based on the most amount of data. Thirdly, because all records are based on sales prices, indices are only capturing a small amount of data for any given time period. Fourthly, the difference between purchasing a property with a mortgage and cash can make a big difference to the value of that property. Property sellers may accept a lower cash value of the property in order to increase the speed of the sale. And the last point I want to make is that the information of average house prices is useful for some industries and government when they're looking to review policies for example, the stamp duty land tax. But I don't see many benefits for individuals analysing house price indices when they're looking to buy or invest in the property market. Because there are so many factors that affect property prices, there'll never be a gradual line when it comes to growth. There will always be peaks and troughs. But as investors, it's worth looking at what's happened in the past so we could have a glimpse of what the future could possibly hold. So that's why I decided to use the data from the Nationwide House Price Index, because its records date back the furthest to 1952. And we want to know if the average property price has doubled every 10 years. So here's what the data showed. Column C helps identify that over the last 60 years, the average property price has in fact more than doubled decade on decade. 
to 2012. Column F shows us that only three out of the last six decades in this particular time frame has the UK seen house prices double in value. Having looked at all the data from the Nationwide House Price Index, there are some interesting facts. The longest time taken for the average UK house price to double was 14 and a quarter years from 1989 Q2 to 2003 Q3, which was from £62,244 to £129,761. The shortest time it took for UK house prices to double, which really surprised me, was three years from 1971 Q1 to 1974 Q1. So from £4,741 to £9,928. It's incredible and I don't know what happened during those years to cause that. If you know, please tell us in the comments below. So the average time taken for the average UK house price to double in value between 1952 and 2019 was eight and a half years. All these numbers are very inspiring, but just be mindful that these numbers don't reflect all types of properties for all areas within the UK. Calculating the average property value increase per year. When we look at the increase in value of the average property price on the Nationwide House Price Index over the last 10 years, between 2009 Q4 and 2019 Q4, we can calculate the average percentage increase per year. In 2009, the average house price was £162,116, and in 2019, the average house price was £215,000, £1,925. So when we deduct the 2009 price from the 2019 price, we're left with £53,809. If we divide that by the original price of 2009 and multiply it by 100, we get 33.19%. When we divide that by 10 years, we get 3.31% average per year. Now let's look at the previous 10 years between 1999 Q4 and 2009 Q4. In 1999, the average house price was £74,638. In 2009, the average house price was £162,116. So we deduct the 1999 price from the 2009 price, which gives us £87,528. We then divide that number by the 1999 average house price, and multiply by 100, which gives us 117.27%. We divide that by the 10 years, and it gives us 11.72% average increase per year. So what is the average that property prices need to increase each year in order to double every 10 years? Well, they would need to increase 7.18% year on year to double every 10 years. Now, I just wanna share a quick chart with you to highlight the difference in data between the Nationwide House Price Index and HM Land Registry House Price Index since 1968. There are some significant differences during this 51 year period. The average house price in 1968 Q4 was £4,089 with a nationwide and £3,696 with HM Land Registry. And that's a difference of 9.61%. And at the other end of the chart, the average house price in 2019 Q4 was 215,925 with the nationwide and 233,739 with HM Land Registry. That's a difference of 7.62%. In May 2014, the Institute for Fiscal Studies produced a paper on measuring house prices, a comparison of different indices. It's a lengthy document that explains the differences and variables in the average house price between the different indices. The amount of detail covered far exceeds the amount of information I've covered in this video, and that I'd want to cover, as I'm approaching the original question from an investor point of view. So are HPR is useful for property investors and landlords. Well, the main problem with analysing the HPI data is that as a property investor, I do not invest in the average house price market. That would be like investing in stocks and shares. What I do is invest in singular properties. So in other words, I don't invest in average prices. I invest in actual prices. So having looked at the average house price data, I'd now like to share some actual sales data with a previous property from which I've had. Here's the numbers for a property which I flipped to buy, renovate and resell for a profit. I purchased the property for £143,500 in May 2013 and I sold it in February 2014 for 177500 I shared how much I made along with the renovation costs 
and associated fees with buying and selling the property in this short video. It's worth a watch if you haven't already seen it. But there's something else very interesting about this property. I received a copy of the deeds during the purchase process and the property was first sold in 1938 for £500. So we can do some simple arithmetic to see if this property has doubled in line with the 10 year theory. So in 2018, using this theory, the property would have been worth 128,000. However, I sold it in 2014 for 177,500. Zoopla's price estimates that it's now worth 247,000 as of April 2020. So over the course of an 80 year period, this property has more than doubled decade on decade. On my website, I also share details of other properties that I've owned and their values today, along with links to all the house price indices that I used for my research. So what does all this data mean for property investors? Well, clearly there's no straight line. It's unreasonable to assume that you could purchase any property and expect it to double in value over the next 10 years. But historical sales data, including the actual data from my renovation project is very inspiring though. It enforces the advice of professional investors, and that is you need to invest for the long term. Now, when investing for the long term, you need to ensure that the numbers work before purchasing. So the rental income you receive covers any overheads and the running costs whilst the property is tenanted. Every buy to let property should be treated as a business. If any business fails to reach at least its running costs, it's not going to survive and a failing buy to let could lead to having to evict tenants. Now, just quickly going back to inflation, here's a question for you. Are you benefiting from inflation? Borrowers can benefit because the amount they borrow can deflate over time. If you borrow 100,000 today to buy a property, in 20 years time, that same 100,000 is gonna be worth far less in terms of its purchasing power. In 1990, the average house price was recorded to be £54,919 with the Nationwide House Price Index. A loaf of bread cost just 51 pence and a pint of milk was 32 pence, both recorded by the Office of National Statistics. Today, all those numbers are much higher. Imagine having a mortgage with a 75% loan to value on that property today. If you purchased that average property in 1990 with an interest only mortgage, you would only owe the lender £41,189 today, with the average house price currently recorded at £217,000 911 pounds. So to sum up, you should never buy and hope. Always buy with cash flow in mind for regular income. And any appreciation you receive over the years will be a bonus. Remember to like and please share if you found this video useful and definitely subscribe if it's your first time here so you won't miss any of my future videos which will all be geared towards helping you start or improve your property business. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.